The Vajant Dam is a monumental engineering achievement, featuring a double-curved, thin arch design, standing at an impressive height of 860 feet. It is renowned for being among the tallest dams globally, measuring 11 feet in width at its crest and 73 feet at its base. Additionally, the dam has a crest length of 623 feet, 16 gates situated on the crest, an underground powerhouse, and three outlets in the abutment. The reservoir of the dam has a capacity designed for 138,000 acre feet. This awe-inspiring structure was part of a vast system of dams, powerhouses, and tunnels constructed by the Societa Adriatica di Elettricita to generate hydroelectric power. However, Despite its impressive design and engineering, deep within the history of the Vajon Dam lies a dark and tragic event surrounded by devastation. Situated in the northeast of Italy, just upstream of Longarone, the Vajon Dam spans the name-giving Vajon River, which feeds into the Piave River. The location of the dam is in a steep and narrow limestone canyon within the majestic Dolomite region of the Italian Alps. The mountainous terrain in this area is distinctive for its near-vertical cliffs, with Mount Toc soaring 4,800 feet above the valley floor. The construction of the dam began in July 1957, and the Vajant Reservoir started filling in February 1960. During the initial filling, there were conflicting opinions regarding the stability of the reservoir bank along Mount Toc. A local newspaper published an article warning of the recurring landslides in the vicinity of the dam site and the likelihood of a disaster. This alarmed the public, leading to legal action against Against the newspaper for spreading false information. Despite the public's concerns, the authorities reassured the residents of their safety, but they continued to harbor doubts about the stability of Mount Toc, which they nicknamed the Mountain That Walks. The dam was finally completed in September 1960, but the events surrounding the reservoir bank remained an ominous foreshadowing of the tragedy that its extent the world hasn't seen up until now. The reservoir filled up until November 4, 1960, when a rock slide of nearly 1 million cubic yards entered the reservoir, causing a 7-foot wave to spread across it. The water level was at a depth of 600 feet, with an elevation of 2,216.5 feet at the time of the rock slide, but no one was injured. Between November and December 1960, the reservoir was lowered to about 450 feet. After the rock slide, hydraulic models were conducted, and exploration wells and pisometers were installed to monitor conditions. Almost a year later, in October 1961, a bypass tunnel was constructed to connect the upper and lower reaches of the reservoir. Over the next year, the reservoir was allowed to fill up again until a large precipitation event in November 1962 caused the lake level to rise to a depth of 780 feet. During this event, measured earth movements increased to 0.5 inches per day within the basin. It was lowered again from December 1962 to March 1963, which caused the movements to stop. From April to July 1963, the reservoir was raised again with an elevation of 705 meters, causing movements to resume at 0.2 inches per day. A pattern had now emerged that as the reservoir level increased, so did the measured creep. In the summer of 1963, the region was hit with another precipitation event that caused the water surface elevation of the reservoir to increase to a level that was nearly as high as the one that had caused the 1960 disaster. The elevation reached a record high of 814 feet, which was only 50 feet from the dam crest elevation. As a result of the significant movements that were measured at over 1.2 inches per day, a reservoir drawdown was initiated once again. Despite this measure, the movements continued to increase, and by October 4th, they had reached an alarming rate of almost 8 inches per day. Despite warnings from the mayor of Erto, who issued a state statement requesting that residents leave the area, and the mayor of Casso, who ordered individuals to evacuate the slopes and posted notices about an expected landslide-induced wave, the warnings were not taken seriously. Roughly 90 minutes before the disaster, traffic was prohibited on roads beneath the dam, and phone messages relayed that a small amount of water may spill over the dam tonight, but there is nothing to worry about. The electric company had advised an engineer to remain calm and stay vigilant. Little did they know that the consequences of their actions would lead to a mass extinction of unknown magnitude. On the night of October 9, 1963, at 10.39 p.m., a massive rock slide occurred when the Vajon Reservoir was at a depth of 782 feet, with a volume of approximately 109,000 acre-feet. The slide's volume was estimated to be 350 million cubic yards, twice the amount of water held behind the Vajon Dam, and it plummeted into the reservoir in under 45 seconds. The Vajon rock slide is considered the worst disaster of its kind in Europe, resulting in strong earth tremors that were felt as far away as Vienna and Brussels. The rock slide caused the Vajon reservoir to displace, with wind and water spreading in all directions. 
the flood depth was about 230 feet, one mile downstream, with an estimated 2,056 fatalities, and many more injured. Dam failure incidents at night tend to be more deadly, and most people were sleeping when the flood appeared. When the rock slide occurred, the dam had extensive on-site monitoring. 20 technical personnel were in the control center on the left abutment, all of whom died. 40 people were killed in an office and hotel building near the right abutment, 300 feet above the reservoir level. A wave of water destroyed buildings in Casso and Erto, communities above the reservoir, causing at least 158 fatalities. The flood wave destroyed five downstream towns, including Longarone, Parago, Rivalta, Villanova, and Fay. The floodwater first reached Longarone at 10.43 p.m., around four minutes after the rock slide. The town was entirely destroyed due to the depth and speed of the flood wave, resulting in one of the highest known fatality rates recorded due to flooding from a dam failure or incident. Longarone was a tourist destination, consisting mainly of residential and commercial structures. Of an estimated 1,328 people in Longarone at the time of the flood wave, 1,269 fatalities occurred, resulting in a 94% fatality rate. The extent of destruction was significant, with most structures completely destroyed or buried, leaving little chance of rescuing people. Despite being subjected to an unprecedented force from the combined slide and overtopping wave, the Vajant Dam structure remained largely undamaged. The over topping wave was caused by a landslide that fell into the Vajon Reservoir, creating a wave that reached over 820 feet high and crashed into the dam. This force was far in excess of design pressures and was unexpected. However, the dam still stands today, albeit with no water behind it. Despite the impressive structural design, the Vajon Dam disaster was caused by an inadequate understanding of the geology in the valley basin. The designers of the dam failed to anticipate the magnitude of the landslide that would occur, leading to catastrophic consequences. The Vajon slide was caused by the combined effects of heavy rainfall and a rising reservoir, which reduced the soil's shear strength and reactivated a historical failure surface. As a result, the weight of the soil and rock mass overcame the soil's shear resistance along a failure plane, leading to a slope stability failure. The slide mass moved as a block, slipping on one or more saturated clay layers, which acted as both a lubricant, reducing friction along the failure plane, and as a membrane to hold back water. Unfortunately, stability analyses were not conducted during dam construction or first filling, even after the appearance of large slope instability in early November 1960. The Vajant disaster highlights the importance of performing comprehensive geotechnical investigations during dam design, particularly reservoir slope stability analyses for dams located in mountainous regions. The officials at Vajant failed to grasp the gravity of the situation and the potential for a rock slide. Even experts familiar with the facility, including the dam site engineers, seemed oblivious to the hazards. The rock slide that occurred in October was over 400 times larger than the one that had happened three years prior. It's typical for individuals to rely on recent events to forecast the future while disregarding any unusual observations. Moreover, there might be a reluctance to warn and evacuate people until the outcome is certain. Even if the officials and engineers were aware of the risks posed by the rock slide, there were limited options to address the situation following construction, aside from completely removing the dam or relocating downstream towns. The Vejant Dam was an impressive engineering feat that unfortunately resulted in one of the worst disasters in Europe's history. Despite the warnings and concerns about the stability of Mount Tok, the dam was completed and the reservoir was filled. The subsequent rock slide and displacement of the reservoir caused a massive flood that claimed over 2,000 lives and injured countless others. The history of the Vajan Dam is shrouded in mystery. As warnings were ignored, doubts were dismissed, and disaster struck in the dead of night. From conflicting opinions to ominous foreshadowing, the deeper side of events leading up to the Vajan disaster still leaves us with many unanswered questions.